Welcome to Faith Positive Radio with Dr. Joey Fawcett, the Christian business coaching conversation that increases your faith with greater joy at work so you love God and others more. Dr. Joey interviews Christian business professionals just like you to discover their secrets for working faith positive in a negative world. Welcome to Faith Positive Radio with Dr. Joey Fawcett. Hello, Faith Positive Nation. It's Dr. Joey Fawcett with another amazing episode of Faith Positive Radio. Man, things have been uncertain for months now. And uh, while some of the uncertainty might have died died down a little bit, uh, we live with uncertainty every day. I mean, if you get out of bed in the morning, you're taking a risk. Oh, but wait, if you stay in the bed, you're taking a risk, right? (laughs) You may not be able to get out of the bed when you want to get out of the bed. Life is so filled with uncertainty. Well, we have the man that you want to hear from today to help you deal with uncertainty, especially in the financial dimensions of your life. Consider him the doctor of uncertainty. And in your risk, savvy quotient is going to go up in amazing ways because of this Faith Positive Radio podcast today. Dr. Richard Smith is my guest. Welcome, Richard, to Faith Positive Radio. Thank you, Dr. Joy. I'm Joey. Sorry, not Dr. Joy. I've been called uh, a lot but worse, you, buddy. Hey, Dr. Joy could be worse. Absolutely. <laughs> it's great been. to be here with you and, uh, and your audience. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm delighted to have you on. So in the midst of all this uncertainty, there's, there's an uncertainty that gets our attention very, very quickly, and that is a financial uncertainty. 2020 yeah. has been an amazing year for uh, uh, festering, growing mm-hmm. <laughs> prolifically, right? Yep. Uncertainty among people oh, financially because absolutely. the stock markets have been up and down and people have been furloughed from jobs. Their yep. income has been stretched in ways. Our income has been stretched in ways. And while, yes, the U.S. government has tried to do some amazing things to help us along, it's mm-hmm. still been a huge matter of uncertainty. And yet yep. we know, Richard, that money was Jesus' second favorite topic. He talked first about the kingdom <laughs> of heaven, right? And then he mm-hmm. talked about money, and he said such uh, distressing things as you cannot serve God and money mm-hmm. or mammon. Uh, mm-hmm. So we as Christians could learn a lot biblically mm-hmm. about how to deal uncert- with uncertainty generally. But your mm-hmm. particular area of expertise is in the uncertainty relative to finances. Mm-hmm. and helping us become risk savvy, help us understand values-based investing. And it's yeah. for all of us. It's for those of us who are uh, the more common investors as opposed to, um, say, sophisticated investors, for instance. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm really excited to talk to you today uh, about this. So tell us what a uh, typical day in the life of Dr. Richard Smith looks like in helping people uh, deal with uncertainty financially. Well, uh, so I actually have a PhD in the mathematics of uncertainty, and I finished my PhD in June of 2000. Um, In uh, late 1998, early 1999, while I was getting my PhD in the mathematics of uncertainty, I thought the stock market would be a pretty interesting place to uh, test out some of my theories. Uh Um, And it turned out that theory wasn't enough. (laughs) <laughs> to help me successfully navigate the markets. Not, right. And, you know, a lot of that is my work today is kind of, uh, yeah, bringing the theory, but also bringing the gap, filling the gap between mm. the theory and the reality, you know. Um, mm-hmm. I actually started out investing, you know, late 1998. I was up like 300% in 18 months in March of 2000 hit, right? right, right. And, uh, and then I was back down to, to break even, uh, in about 60 days. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it, it was um, easier to make money. The down, down ride is a lot right? faster than the up ride, you know? Yeah, yeah, um, sure. but that was a wonderful experience. You know, what a mm-hmm. learning experience that was and, um, an opportunity to go back and say, Hmm, you know, how can I figure this out myself and how can mm-hmm. I help other people, uh, figure it out too, you know, and I've been developing algorithms and building software Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, and educating people about uh, good risk management. Mm-hmm. And the principles apply in the financial markets, and the financial markets are a wonderful place to um, kind of develop and practice those principles because there's so much data 
there mm. that you can work with, right? Okay. And mathematicians um, love data. Mathematicians and computer nerds love data, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So you can do a lot of number crunching. That's it. That's <clears throat> and it. Um, did you? But also, it? you know, there's nothing like having a little money on the line to realize that mm. you're not as smart as you think. That you're actually kind of an emotional basket case, mm. and um, and that you make emotional decisions. You know, I, a lot of people. I was involved in a lot of different spiritual pursuits, you know, before mm -hmm. even getting involved in the stock market. Mm -hmm. And I found that I've learned as much about myself in the stock market as I've learned about myself anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when you have money on the table and it's your own money and you see yourself making consistently foolish decisions mm -hmm. over and over again, you know, mm -hmm. it really kind of mm -hmm. wakes you up like, wait a minute, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but I just one, um, big aha. Okay. That I'll share on this right. that happened Please. to myself. And I think happens to everyone and it's broader than just investing in the stock market. Mm. Um, it actually connects back to two Nobel prizes in economics. Okay. Mm. Daniel Kahneman. Um, he's written some popular books now thinking fast and slow was his big one. He was one of the founders of behavioral economics. Mm. And, um, you know, which is kind of economics for real people, right? <laughs> what do real people do, right? Not what That's does, good. you know, you know, ideal man do, rational man, because right, you know, we're right. not real rational, man. right? What is, <laughs> but uh, what does normal people do yeah. under uncertainty mm. when there's money on the table, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. And um, and then uh, he got a Nobel Prize in, I think, early 2000s. And then Richard Thaler recently in 17 or 18. Um, and what they got Nobel Prizes in economics for, get ready for this, it's quite hard to believe, is that we hate to lose. <laughs> okay? And the trouble is, know, though, we I hate to lose. I didn't know get a Nobel Prize in, yeah, in, shocking, in discovering isn't it? that. Yeah, it really it's is. shocking that that yeah. hadn't really been factored in to <laughs> economics before Kahneman and Tversky started looking into that, right? Yeah. A popular movie and book was written about them. Moneyball made into a movie with Brad Pitt. Absolutely. About, you know, all these biases that we bring to the table um, that, uh, that are predictably irrational. Mm. Okay. As another popular book coined it, which is a mm. great title. Mm -hmm. So uh, we hate to lose. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the fact that we hate to lose has different implications, different consequences, depending on if we're underwater on an investment or we're ahead on an investment. Mm, mm -hmm. So when you are losing on an investment, the fact that you hate to lose makes you not want to sell. Mm. You want to double down. You want to put mm. more money into it, right? Mm -hmm. um, anything or, but sell. Throw and, good money uh, after bad, right? Until, you know, what Richard Thaler, his addition to this shocking um, discovery was that not only do we hate to lose, but we always want to get back to break even. Hmm. And so, you know, this is me, right? Working on my PhD in the mathematics of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Stock market starts falling. My account starts falling. I start telling myself all kinds of lies, yep. you know, about what I'm going to do and how I'm going to behave and why I'm making the decisions I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And it, it was like, you know, embarrassing, right? But that's what everybody does. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it doesn't have to be this way, right? Mm -hmm. So just to finish the story, when we're losing you know, we hold on, right? We actually take more risk. We are risk seeking when mm. we're losing. Mm. But when we're ahead on an investment, we, our fear of loss attaches itself to our profits. Hmm. And we become fearful of losing our profits. So we are risk averse when we're winning and we're risk seeking when we're losing. Okay. No. So okay. this is a very powerful bias that influences, mm. you know, hundreds if not thousands of decisions every day. Do you know we make as many as 35,000 decisions a day? Wow. Some Nothing mundane like, like whether or not to get out of bed. Yeah, 250 yeah. decisions just about food alone. Wow. You know? Yeah. And, what, um, what am I going to have for breakfast? Yeah, and every one of those decisions involves a risk that you made mm. the wrong decision. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. And so and then we bring this loss aversion into all those decisions, especially the ones that have to do with money. Mm. So, um, so that was really eye-opening to me. And, you know, individual investors have a terrible track record in terms of 
you know, meeting or even beating, let alone beating the markets. Mm -hmm. And I think that a huge amount of it is because of this loss aversion that we have mm. that makes us make these kind of consistently, predictably irrational, you know, emotional decisions. Mm. So once I discovered that, I set out to um, help people overcome that through technology, through education. And it's, it's an easy thing to explain. I can explain it to anyone in five minutes and they get it, you know, <laughs> but just because it's easy doesn't mean, you it's know, simple. It's, right. <laughs> it's, it's easy to do. That's right. right. And, easy um, to put into practice. Right. But when you think about it this way, you know, and when you can see investing and you can see risk in this mm -hmm. way, really mm -hmm. as really a behavioral challenge, right. Mm. And not so much mm. an information challenge. You can really see a, a pathway in which the markets really can um, be a better experience and a more engaged and constructive experience for individuals. And I'm a big believer in uh, the value of individuals, let's say, going back to our faith, right? Mm -hmm. That is where the sacred value of the individual comes from, is that God mm -hmm. created all of us mm -hmm. and that we are all, you know, God's children. Right. right, with the individually, not collectively, God. individually. That's right. That's right. <laughs> every single one of us has the image Every single one of us, God. you know. Right. And um, so it's kind of ironic to me how popular culture has come to, you know, uh, shun religion and supposedly value individualism when, uh, <laughs> you know, Christianity is basically the source of that um, culture of individuality, right? right? That's of right. Individual freedom. Right. And, um, so I really believe that, um, that people who have spiritual values, Christian values, mm -hmm. have a role to play in the financial markets. Mm. And because, you know, really this is a very important um, activity in our capitalist economy. Yeah. So it's a capital allocation is a values based allocation, right? It's values-based, yeah, it's values based, based on based. Our Christian and faith. And right now, right. everybody is just turning it over to the pros or putting their money into index funds, and there's no accountability. Mm. So it's all institutional. There's no responsibility. Institutional to investing. values, right? right? So mm -hmm. if we can make the markets more accessible, it gives more people who, you know, have gone to the trouble to build up some capital because mm -hmm. um, of hard work, right? the mm -hmm. chance to express their values in the markets. And I believe the chance to grow their wealth for themselves and their families. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm all about is kind of helping people kind of overcome their fears about being in the markets, give them some tools to help support them on their journey, but also encourage them in their freedom, you know, to engage the markets on their own terms and not just, you know, always having to listen to the professionals and, and uh, kind of be scared out of doing this on their own. Wow, I love what you're saying there, Richard, because I hear you highlighting the worth of the individual. Yeah. And of course we know when Christ was crucified and then resurrected, it was for every single one of us. It was not for Absolutely. those of us who were professional religionists. No, uh, it's a beautiful thing, you know, yeah, it's a beautiful really thing. Is. There's a lot of freedom in that. So you mentioned the role that Christians have to play in helping understand investing and, and in mm -hmm. responsible investing. Yeah. What would that role look like if you were able to cast it for Faith Positive Nation? I think it would be to allocate your capital in accordance with your values. Mm. Right. Now that and bring your values into your capital allocation decision. Gotcha. Decisions, right? And so right. you can build your own portfolio of companies that you believe share your values. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. And um and you can you can incorporate um, uh, financial factors into that decision making, but mm -hmm. you can also incorporate your values as one of those factors, right? right? And you don't just have to do the same thing that everybody else is doing. You can build a portfolio of individual companies um, that you know you've done a little bit of research on, or leverage the research of others, mm -hmm. and you can build and manage your own portfolios, uh, you know, um, and not be so fearful right? Do it in a risk savvy mm. way. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. That's exactly <laughs> and, right. Um, yep. And again, Lesson just the uncertainty. Kind of incorporate your values into your capital allocation decisions. Cause people don't realize the, the, you know, 
most people look at the markets as a place to kind of passively grow their wealth, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you're actually, when you allocate your capital, you're influencing mm. who the winners and losers are. Mm -hmm. you, you are, are an influencer, right? It might be a small mm -hmm. influence, but if you have the good fortune to have enough capital to invest, mm -hmm. um, how you allocate your capital is more influential than who you vote for for president. Wow. Because you are in the minority, you know, of influencers mm -hmm. in our country. Right. And I it, think right. capital allocation matters. And I think that's, you know, people can vote in the markets with mm. the culture and the leaders that they want to and the businesses that they want to support. Right. Which and companies that they uh, invest you know, really in. Overlooked. And, mm -hmm. and to me, you know, it's, it's disturbing and unsettling that investing in the markets have just become kind of like Las Vegas transferred to, you know, your home computer screen. Mm. And, um, and uh, that they're kind of, it's treated as like a game, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. And I think it's really, really important and not something that should be just turned over to the so-called professionals, mm -hmm. you know, much like health as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you have to advocate for your own health and so your yeah. financial health as well. Absolutely. It begs the question then, uh, Dr. Richard Smith, you can go to richardmsmith.com and learn more. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. So please do that. Faith Positive Nation. Even now as we're, we're talking... Okay, I have the opportunity to, in effect, cast my vote by investing in individual companies that I, with whom I share values and I've uh, yep. gathered, uh, educated myself about that company, what they do, how they do it, right? Yep. Uh, about the yep. values particularly. That presupposes that I know my values that I want to give expression yeah. to in investing. So yeah. give us some examples of values that you've seen people invest in the stock market based on that, uh, I mean, the, the phrase values-based investing has been around for a while. Socially conscious investing, right, yep. is another way of yep. talking about it. Um, yep. Share with us some of the values that you've seen people base their investments on. Well, um, I think good stewardship of okay. assets All right. is one, right? Um, um, I think that you can also look at the leaders of the company as people. Okay. And you can see if you think that they share your values. I think okay. it's very important to, you know, listen to um, the uh, quarterly conference calls of the companies okay. that you're invested in just to kind of hear. Mm. Um, and, you know, we all have our own, we all have a conscience. That's another mm. one of our gifts from God, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, and we can really perceive um, a lot about character, I think through mm. that gift of conscience. Mm. And, um, but you know, you have to kind of see the people and you have to hear the people. You can't just kind of take what's written down on paper, you know? Yeah. Trust, but verify. <laughs> and, um, Reagan trust, said, but verify, right? you know? <laughs> so I think letting, you know, your own gifts kind of help guide you to, you know, those um, enterprises mm. that, uh, that you have a sense, share your values. Mm -hmm. And it seems more and more companies today are looking beyond profit margins to ways of yep. using capital to influence society for the mm -hmm. good. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of Tom's, for instance, that every time you buy a pair of shoes, they give a pair of shoes. Um, mm -hmm. and, I, and I know nothing about the political leanings of that company. Yep. I'm just talking about what yep. sounds like to me to be a magnanimous thing to do. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, there, there are companies which seek to work for, for social good. How does mm -hmm. one discover those types of companies? I think there's actually a lot of information available out there. Mm -hmm. um, if you just go to the internet and you Google, you know, socially mm -hmm. responsible okay. uh, investing, um, okay. that uh, the internet's a wonderful place for gathering information when you know oh, what you're looking for, right? Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> and um, if you can think of it, somebody's probably already organized it. <laughs> That's right. And um, so, uh, you know, it's a good question. I don't have a specific site to send you to. Right, um, right, right. But I think a little bit of research, again, even if you just know what your question is, right? Mm -hmm. that you, that's half your answer. Yeah. Well, the reason I know about Tom's is because our younger daughter, when she was a teenager, wanted a pair of Tom's. 
-hmm. And the way she sold it to me was, well, dad, for every pair I buy, Mm -hmm. They give a pair to somebody else, you know, who doesn't have, she knew her dad. Yeah. She knew how to hook me. on that. She knew how to hook. Yeah. That's yeah. right. So there are other companies, uh, that the CEOs are quite well known for their Christian faith and mm -hmm. for giving expression to that. But what I hear you talking about are values that we share in common. So mm -hmm. for instance, if, if, uh, I'm passionate about stopping human trafficking, for instance, yeah, uh, then I could find a company that, that contributes to those kinds of causes Absolutely, uh, is, is what you're suggesting. So yep. all of that can, can align my values with corporate values of these companies. And so that yeah. creates, as you said, uh, socially responsible investing. Yep. Then you've developed algorithms that actually yeah. help you uh, figure out if these are wise investments for means yes. beyond your values. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, I'm in the process of developing new technology right now. So mm -hmm. you can keep track of my work again at richardmsmith.com. Okay. Um, but my past company that I recently um, uh, exited from that I started in 2005, uh -huh. we did exactly that. You know, I built technology there and algorithms to help people build and manage their own portfolios. And the basic idea was, hey, if you can identify a basket of 100 stocks or so that you think would be a good match for you, you know, mm -hmm. your values, whatever they are, mm -hmm. um, uh, then I can share with you the algorithms to help you kind of filter those 100 stocks down to 15 or 20 mm -hmm. that have good um, quantitative properties and that together, gotcha. taken as a whole, make a good portfolio gotcha. and kind of hook you up with a system for deciding how when to buy, when to sell, and how much to invest. Okay. Excellent. So that's my, that's my work. And, and the when to sell part helps me overcome uh, that, that losing. I hate to lose. Yes, right? and exactly. It will help it you down. be risk averse with your losers and risk seeking with your winners. Uh, and that's what makes me risk okay. savvy. So I manage the uncertainty. Savvy, right. Yeah, yeah, you know, absolutely. Instead of being, you know, uh, doubling down on your losers by trying to avoid loss, that fear of loss, you actually end up losing, right? Mm. That's the risk paradox. And that's because my brain focuses on losing. Yeah. And so the more it focuses exactly. on losing, the more that's, I lose, yeah, right? Absolutely. Well, <laughs> it, consider me naive to say this, but it seems yeah. like the entire gambling industry is based on, I hate to lose. Yeah, absolutely. And unfortunately, most of the retail investment industry is based on it as well. Hmm. Mm. You know, mm. um, so, yep. So that's why I'd love to see more Christians involved. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, <laughs> it, it's a, it's doubling down. Cause it's, um, it's not always moral or ethical. No, it's not. You know? And despite, uh, the, um, laws that are written around fiduciary responsibilities, right? Yep. We, we all know how well those are enforced. Yeah, they're tough to enforce. You don't have to look back uh, much further than the mortgage debacle, right? To, yeah. Uh, to see what was going on there. Yeah. So what you allow the Christian investor to do, what you facilitate is values-based investing. Mm -hmm. It's also smart investing mm -hmm. in terms of being able to identify yeah. based on the historical data, those companies that are more likely, right, to, yep. to make you money and then your algorithms yep. help me sell when I need to sell and invest yep. buy more when I need to buy yep. more. So exactly. I overcome my emotional challenges in yep. that regard. You wow. get to overcome your short term em emotions of fear and greed and engage mm -hmm. your longer term emotions of, uh, you know, more enduring emotions of value and care. Wow. So I can cast That's aside. That's what I'd like to help people do. <laughs> oh, Richard, that is beautiful. So I get to cast and, you know, aside and, fear and greed. Yeah, I get to cast aside fear and greed and, um, you know, uh, celebrate the values that you hold as a Christian, including family, right? Mm. Um, legacy, um, mm -hmm. charity, mm. all those things that, you know, if you make for good are risk savvy, and yeah, make for good stewardship. And by all means, you know, the, the, uh, the markets are the heartbeat of our capitalist economy and, and they're important, they're valuable and they, uh, should be, um, have better stewardship. 
Well, and, and that's how, when we're able to cast aside fear and greed and then yeah. become risk savvy with our investments, yeah, we are generating more money, which allows us to mm -hmm. feed more hungry people and clothe more naked people and Absolutely. Um, create affordable housing. And the kinds of things that Jesus encouraged us to do for the mm -hmm. least of these are sisters yeah. and brothers. Yeah. RichardMSmith.com is the mm -hmm. website. Please go there right now, Faith Positive Nation. Uh, if you're walking the dog or you actually are getting to commute to work again um, <laughs> and you're listening to this podcast, uh, we've got it on Richard. Uh, msmith.com. It's easy to remember, but we've also got it on getpositive.today. So just search for Dr. Richard Smith there. And uh, Chuck has done a great job of putting the links there for you to go and investigate that. Faith Positive Nation, uh, Richard always wants to know from our guest about a favorite Bible verse or Bible passage, something that really, in, in to talk about it in your language, uh, shapes those values, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, What's your favorite? And I know that's asking because Jesus' <laughs> second favorite topic was all about money, right? Uh, he talked a lot about it. But what, what's your favorite passage or verse? I think uh, one of my favorites certainly is the parable of the centurion. Hmm. Tell me and more. And I think that the, um, the humility hmm. that the centurion showed hmm. uh, is a very... Um, underappreciated uh, the obedience really that he showed mm -hmm. you know, tell us quickly to, that story about the centurion so we can um, so we can so remember. he had a sick assistant right mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he heard about Christ and he went to Christ and he asked for his assistant to be healed and Christ said take me to him and he said you know uh, no I'm not worthy to have you enter under my roof only mm -hmm. say the word and my servant will be healed. Yeah. And, um, and Christ marveled and said, I've seen no greater faith in all of Jerusalem. Mm. Mm. So mm. that's a marvelous story. Mm. And um, certainly being involved in the financial markets, what I see is one of the biggest problems is overconfidence and people kind of taking um, the market too personally and mm. not bringing humility. Again, mm -hmm. that kind of goes back to how the markets can be a wonderful journey of self-discovery, uh, yeah. you know, provided you don't have too much money on the table. But I just love that parable. <laughs> and, um, and I think it also is a good uh, description of kind of the attitude that we have to um, have in the world, you know? Mm. We obviously had a role in the world, Mm -hmm. very much a, a prominent role and a powerful yeah, role. Yeah, very yeah. prominent. Mm -hmm. He was able to wield that power, but also to submit to a power greater than him. Which and, is the, the great challenge for all of us, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, so, I think also in that story, he, he likened Christ unto himself a little bit because he said, you know, I can just give the word and my men right. will go and do my bidding. And so yeah. That, exactly. that humility and the recognition and submission, that's, yep. that's a powerful story. Thank you for sharing that. Dr. Richard mm -hmm. Smith is my guest today on Faith Positive Radio. Faith Positive Nation, please run, don't walk to richardmsmith.com and check out that website and learn how you can align your values with some risk-savvy methods that will allow you to succeed in the stock market so that you can become more philanthropic uh, among your own family members and in your community. Richard, Amen. thank you so much. I pray God's blessings upon you and your wife and your three incredibly musically gifted children. <laughs> oh, Thanks thank so much. much. Appreciate and you being on to be today. Here. Thank you, Joey. Thanks for listening to Faith Positive Radio, the Christian business coaching conversation that increases your faith with greater joy at work so you love God and others more. Suggest guests and ask questions when you email Dr. Joey at info at getpositive.today. And be sure to get your free gift of the five positive business conversations to have today. Coaching program at getpositive.today. Until next time, may God bless you with everything your heart can hope for and more than your mind can imagine.